this thing on. Ow. Are you ready, dude? What's up, everyone? Jimmy from MTB Travel Review here, and we are back for another episode of Stupid Simple Bike Chat. For those of you that are new to the series, I am a self-proclaimed enduro bro. I am huge into mountain bike racing, spend most of my time enduro racing. This is Matt one of the owners of bootlegger bikes and a self-proclaimed bike mechanic or bike nerd. The goal of this series is to take super complex bike subjects and make them easy for you to understand. Today we're going to talk about a pretty basic subject, but I think something that a lot of people are looking for information on, and that is the difference between a mountain bike and a fat bike. So let's start with the basic differences between the mountain bike and the fat bike, right? And that's gonna be their purpose. So the mountain bike is what I typically ride. This is my new Orbea Occam LT, <laughs> jacked up with a 38 fork on the front to make it enduro. Endure bro. Endure bro. So the mountain bike is basically meant for single track mountain bike trails. Relatively skinny tires, made for the dirt. It's tall, it's lean, it's supposed to go fast. It's supposed to have good traction, but also be able to handle big sends, jumps, pretty much anything you throw at it. So generally speaking, if you're riding a bike in the woods on single track, you're probably gonna be on a mountain bike. There are a lot of different mountain bikes. There are single speed, there are full suspension, there are hard tail. We're not gonna get into that today. We're just talking about the general purpose. Now on the other end of the spectrum, you have the fat bike. Now generally speaking, the fat bike is just that, a fat bike. And when they say fat bike, they're referring to the tires, right? So what is the general use of a fat bike? Yeah, generally fat bikes are used on softer terrains, most specifically sand and snow. If you think about those two riding services, they typically are difficult to ride in with a skinnier tire. Therefore, we have fat tires. Uh, we run them at extremely low pressure. The low pressure gives us both traction and surface area. So the more surface area, the better we stay afloat on those soft riding surfaces like sand and snow. So the mountain bike, typically for like hard pack dirt, right? Yes. Slightly skinnier tires. If you ride anything like <clears throat> mud, snow, sand, because of how skinny the tires are, it's typically going to sink in and make a rut. Exactly. It makes it pretty miserable to ride. But you put in the fat bike with a super wide soft tire, and it's not going to sink into the snow, the sand, or the mud as much, which kind of extends your window. We're up here in northern Vermont, so there's snow a lot of the time. Like more than half of the time. <laughs> so we have to hang up the mountain bike and either you go skiing, which, you know, I'm getting there, or you get a fat bike and you ride some really nice groomed trails, right? Now, can you ride a fat bike on regular mountain bike trails? You can. Uh, it's it's more of a, a niche than, than typical riding or, you know, using the right tool for the job. It, you know, it gets cumbersome. It's a much slower pace because of the much larger tire. And, and it's just not nearly as enjoyable as using, you know, the right tool for the job, a, a mountain bike. There's folks that will use a fat bike as a, you know, it's their one bike quiver. So they'll gravel ride with it. And yes, you can do it. But again, the, the right tool for the job there is a, a gravel bike. So we like to, to think of the fat bike as a very specific tool used in Vermont or in the Northeast as a winter bike riding on in the snow. Your winter weapon winter weapon. So now that we know the basic differences uh, for intended use with these bikes, let, let's talk about what makes them most effective at, at their purpose, right? Starting with the mountain bike, the first thing you'll notice is it's a bit taller. Especially on a fully suspended mountain bike like this Orbea Occam, you know, it's running a 29-inch wheel. That's a very large diameter uh, wheel, um, which is is ubiquitous and very appropriate for that style of riding. And it's also got six inches of travel or 150 to 160 millimeters of travel. So the bike geometry has to be designed around uh, accommodating that suspension travel as, as the bike goes through its travel. So higher center of gravity is okay. You're generally on hard packed dirt. The 29 inch wheel has very much become the optimum wheel for multiple reasons. That's pretty much what everyone's riding. The other thing you'll notice on the mountain bike is like Matt said, the suspension. 
Not all mountain bikes have suspension. This is a full suspension mountain bike. It has both rear suspension and a fork in the front for front suspension. It allows for a very plush ride. There's also a lot of other fine tune differences, right? So you'll notice the brake rotors on this bike are significantly larger. A lot of that has to do with the speed that you hit on this bike, right? Is that more, more braking power, generally speaking? Yeah, I mean, the, the speed that you're hitting things, the, the style of braking. So typically, if you're traveling at a high rate of speed, you need to slow down quickly. So you're on and off the brakes um, significantly, uh, whereas at slower pace riding, like a fat bike, um, you don't tend to be on and off the brakes as, as much. So the last thing we'll talk about on the mountain bike, which is a significant difference, of course, is the tires. What is the general tire width on your everyday mountain bike? You know, generally you're, you're starting, I would say, at about a 2.2 inch width for like cross country style bikes, all the way up to 2.6 for mountain bikes, full suspension, uh, you know, all mountain bikes or enduro bikes. This bike's running, uh, what are you running, 2.6? 2.5, 2.6. 2.5 front, 2.4 rear, which is a perfect transition over to the fat bike. Obviously, the most noticeable difference being the tire size. So what is the general tire sizes on this monster truck? Yeah, so what defines a fat bike is essentially the, the width range. Fat bikes start at a 3.8 inch width, and they go up to 5 inches. So anywhere between 3.8 and 5 inches is is considered a fat bike. The most common width I would say is four and a half, uh, which is what this bike is equipped with. It's a 26 inch wheel with a 4.5 inch tire. There are also 27 and a half inch wheeled fat bikes that have been trickling into the market. Um, they run the same width. Generally those are you know between four and five inches. Mm -hmm. In width. Now, one thing to notice too is that obviously the rims on my mountain bike, which I believe these are 30, yeah, 37 millimeter internal width, these are significantly wider as well, right? So you yeah, you know, to be able to run a tire of, of a four or five inch width, you obviously need a rim to accommodate that. A four and a half inch tire on a 30 millimeter rim or even 40 millimeter rim would, would handle quite awkwardly. So <laughs> this fat bike's equipped with an 80 millimeter width rim, which is pretty common. I would say 90% of fat bikes are equipped with around an 80 millimeter rim. There's up to a hundred millimeter width, which, which has become less and less common these days. Uh, nearly every fat bike that comes out is is in that 80 millimeter width, give or take a couple of millimeters. Gotcha. And then you also mentioned this is 26 inch. Yeah, it's as 26. Far as the wheel size. So is that because the goal of the fat bike is to stay lower so that you're more stable? Well, it's it really has to do with the outer diameter. So if you think about this 26 inch diameter, four and a half width tire, um, the outer diameter is is extremely large. It's approaching the size of some 27 and a half and 29 inch mountain bike tire outer mm -hmm. diameters. If we built a 29 inch fat bike, that would be a very large bike. Now it does, generally speaking, the bike sits lower, right? It's, it's, it's more squatted again, because from my understanding, like when you're on the snow, <clears> you tend to slide around a lot more. Again, that, that low stability is the goal, right? Lower speeds, slippery, uneven yeah. surfaces. Yeah, for sure. You know, and we, we try to keep a low slung top tube just because, um, you, you know, you, you think about the intended use of a fat bike and generally it being on snow, you're sliding around, mm -hmm. um, you know, you step off the bike onto the ground, you sink in six inches, eight inches, a foot of snow. Now all of a sudden the bike is, is mm -hmm. underneath you much higher. Yeah. You know, this bike isn't equipped with a dropper, but it's become more common on fat bikes because it's it's really nice to have for mounting and dismounting the bike in the snow with a bunch of bulky clothes on and overweight boots and blah, blah, blah. And one other major difference here, obviously, is this is a full suspension bike. There is no suspension on this. Is that is that common for a fat bike? Yeah, it's pretty common because if you think about the pressures we're running these, these large volume tires at, we're running, you know, we're running six PSI, five PSI, four PSI. And that's and versus like a, you know, 25 versus, to 27 PSI. Yeah, is what 20 to that. 25 PSI. That's a big on difference. A, on a mountain bike. So this is like added suspension. So it gives you, so yeah, it gives you some inherent suspension. Snow fills in, the bumps fills in between roots and rocks. So the, the trails tend to be a little smoother uh, on, uh, for, for winter riding than, than summer riding. So 
you don't necessarily need that suspension, and mm -hmm. it's an expense that a lot of folks on fat bikes don't don't uh, see valuable. Yeah. But they do make them occasionally. They do. Like I've seen them with with a fork. Yep. There suspension. Yeah. There are there are fat bike suspension forks specifically. There's there's two or three of them out there that are pretty common. Mm -hmm. um, you don't see them a lot. There's also a couple of companies that make uh, full suspension fat bikes, which is not that common, and also more of a nice to have than than a real necessity. Yeah. So generally speaking, I think the, the last thing I'll note is typically in a mountain bike, you want some nice hard pack dirt or loam as they call it, just something, a hard surface to get your traction and ride, right? Can you just take this bike out in 12 inches of snow, just fresh snow and ride uh, it? Or does it have to be treated a certain way? You know, taking this out in fresh, fresh powder and thinking that you're going to stay on the bike is is an oversight. Yeah. Um, generally, you need some type of compaction in the snow to be able to, to ride this fat yeah. bike effectively. I've heard a lot of people that like go out in fresh snow their first time on a fat bike and they hate it because yeah. it's a slog. It's, like well, it's, just... <laughs> it's terrible. I mean, you think about just walking in a foot of snow and, and how, yeah. how cumbersome it is. Try to ride a bike regardless of how big the tires are. It's, it's, it's not it's yeah. not going to be pleasant. So if you're going to invest in a fat bike, you probably want to make sure there's some, we call them groomed trails near you, right? Yeah, so, yeah groomed trails or, you know, there are folks that, there are multi-use trails out there in some areas that, you know, people people snowshoe and ski on. Mm -hmm. um, back before we had actual groomed, fat bike groomed trails, we used to ride those. So, I mean, I think that pretty much wraps it up as far as the basic differences go. Yeah, I mean, I think one last piece would be studded or unstudded. Mm. Uh, fat bike tires, you know, you think about riding in, in the winter, ice is, a, ice is a factor, especially in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. So uh, a, lot of type, a lot of fat bikes are equipped with studdable tires. So this tire does not have studs in it right now, but it's got holes in it to accept studs. Uh, very similar to car tires that, that come studdable. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we offer for bikes like this that we sell, we offer for folks to purchase studs. Yeah. Um, we install them. And I tell folks that, you know, they're riding in the Northeast, you're nearly always uh, going to find an instance where you need studs. So you might as well just do it. Yeah. All right. So if you want to learn more about actual fat biking and see what it's really like, there is another uh, video on my channel. I'll put a link up here somewhere. Uh, you can check that guys out. It's me and Matt on an adventure over at Kingdom Trails on some fat bikes. It's actually really fun. I don't personally own a fat bike yet. Honestly, I can't afford it, and I just haven't got into it. I got more into skiing. I'm assuming you own multiple fat bikes. <laughs> I, have a, I have a fat bike. Yeah. Yeah, I have a fat bike. Cool. So they both have their purpose, right? For anyone that's just getting into it, I usually recommend sticking with a standard mountain bike, whether that be for just the gravel roads or for single track. I think a fat bike is something I typically recommend someone adding as their second bike, right? I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, as always, guys, thanks for following along. If you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. We're going to put up a bunch more of these videos. The subject depth will probably get deeper and deeper. We're starting with the basics, but we appreciate the support. And keep riding, y'all. Simple bike chat is, that's not what I wanted to say. What did he say? Work them into a super easy to digest peanut butter and jelly and sandwich for you. <laughs> Mind your business. Okay, we're filming in here. I'm sweating. <laughs>